Hi guys, I'm uh, here to teach you the box method of vector tracing in Illustrator. So the first thing that we're going to do here is open up Illustrator, create a new document, and then what you're going to do is go to File, uh, Import, oh, Place, Place, right, and uh, find the file that you want to use. So I'm going to start off with this pocket watch here. It's always best to, uh, okay, thanks Illustrator. It's always best to leave the, the, the image at the size it is and resize your artboard because it's better to work at a larger scale in vectors than smaller because you don't want to be working at 6400 times zoom all the time because it'll make your life miserable. <laughs> Okay, uh, so now we have our image placed here. It's all aligned and everything. So we go to the layer it's in, double click it, set it to template, and uh, you can turn dim off. I usually put it to something like 75. I find it's a good uh, halfway point. And then we start working in a new layer. So we zoom in a little bit. I'm going to do probably this part right here. Now the trick is with things that are circles and rings, you can't do it all in one piece because it'll just look horrific and you'll end up with 5,000 points. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a box. The, the trick is before you start resizing the rectangle you convert it to a gradient mesh. It's been a while since I've done this. So when you have your box, select it, object, create gradient mesh, and one, and one in the rows and columns. You don't want any points to start off with. And then OK. And now we move the points. And it may look like it's behaving a little funny, but don't worry. Just uh, move the handles around. And you should be familiar enough with vectors where this isn't too much of a problem. And just make it fit. Now you may have to use the convert anchor point tool, shift C, if the anchors are locked into a corner and uh, kind of being a perfectionist here that's not really necessary <laughs> so there we go so now we got our basic outline and what we do now convert our uh, select the white arrow select each point and then press I to get the eyedropper and sample the colors under each point. And that'll give us our basic color. Oh, it's doing that thing. Okay, we're probably gonna have to edit here. Sometimes you get a glitch where it will actually sample the line color of the mesh, which is insane. I don't know why it does that. Uh, so what you're gonna have to do is zoom in and carefully select just outside the points. There, much better. It's looking pretty flat right now, but the trick is really you kind of have to see where the colors band and then what you do, you press U to get the add point tool on a gradient mesh and see how there's a brown line going this way? Well it starts up here, so I'll add a point here and you see the line follows the contour perfectly. So now when I sample the colors at both ends, you have a nice gradient. It's not going to show up much there because there's not much of a difference there, but we can do this gold part here. Sample that. And you can see we start getting this nice gold gradient with almost no work whatsoever. And just uh, Add your points wisely because it's very easy to end up with an insanely complicated mesh that will just be a nightmare to work with. So you really have to have an eye for where the colors are and just deal with kind of lateral bands. We can deal with the uh, horizontal bands later. Just get this kind of fleshed out here. It may be tempting to try and make it uh, perfectly accurate, but it's not important, really. So there, we have a nice kind of uh, 
golden band there and now what we can do is right here we have a dark spot so we can click here and add a line going that way and now that will separate the colors so we can add another line here and then make these dark just sample the colors you'll learn to press AI quickly and then we get a nice separated part this doesn't look too great right now but once you add all this in it actually is a pretty convincing effect and um, there's various tricks to it uh, one important aspect is actually these handles here if you pull this handle down it'll change how far the color of this point affects this so if I pull this handle all the way in the, the bra this color this points color will take over this area all by doing that which can be really important in things like gold because gold is very difficult to get to look right but as you can see that's uh, looking pretty decent I mean from this zoom out uh, if it weren't for this kind of little chink it would probably be pretty uh, pretty hard to tell the difference okay okay so now uh, the problem with this method is you end up with a seam here so the next stage is to make another box make that a gradient mesh okay. you can even start from having that already let's see okay yeah so you want to convert this to a gradient mesh one and one uh, these things don't matter as far as I can tell I've never been able to understand what difference they make uh, so yeah same thing back to outline mode the trick is you gotta line these up perfectly otherwise you will have problems so I'll just do this quickly and now you can see it's lined up here so what you need to do sample the colors and then on this section you need to add points exactly where the points are on the other one and then if you sample the colors it should line up almost perfectly and if you can't get it just right you can always actually sample literally from the other mesh there you go uh, sometimes you need to just overlap it just a little bit but once again not a big deal and there you go it takes a little tweaking but it uh, at any reasonable zoom it's completely seamless so yeah that's uh... that's how you do it uh... have a good day once again not a big deal and there you go it takes a little tweaking but it uh... at any reasonable zoom it's completely seamless so yeah that's uh... that's how you do it uh... have a good day